Hello everyone and a very happy Friday and thank you for taking the time to join us today. My name is Quiva, I'm the Events and Communications Manager with Limerick Chamber and I have big boots to fill today as regrettably our CEO D Ryan cannot join us for today's session. We are delighted however to welcome Amanda Finnegan of Adair Human Resource Management as our speaker today. Amanda has prepared a thorough presentation which I'm sure will provide us all with key insights we can adapt and hopefully implement to our own organisations as we now navigate an ever-changing post-COVID working environment. I'll just go through some housekeeping before I hand you over to Amanda. So uh, please note all participants are muted and are not, video sharing is not enabled for today's sessions. We do encourage you to raise your hand or avail of the chat Q&A feature throughout if you have any questions and we'll pose all of today's questions to Amanda at the end of the session. This session is being recorded, so once approved for release, we will share with all of our participants today. We also have an array of support sessions available via our YouTube page as well, and this session will be uploaded to our YouTube page. Lastly, we ask that all participants engage in today's polls and make the most of that chat feature to maximise our time here together this morning. So we hope you enjoy today's session, and I'll now welcome Amanda Finnegan, today's speaker. Amanda, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks so much, Quiva. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the session. I'm very encouraged by everybody's participation on a long weekend, so um, welcome to it. I hope we make the most of it together. I couldn't agree more. If you participate in the polls, we know kind of which direction we're going in, so please do that. Um, uh, just to help out, the accent is South African, and um, the surname certainly Irish, so if you were wondering that's a very Irish name and very un-Irish um, accent. So welcome to the session. I hope you at least enjoy that too. Um, who we are, I'm from Adair Human Resource Management. We are leading experts in employment law, industrial relations. And today we are hoping you get a bit of a flavor of the best practice human resource management element. Um, and at the end of the session, I'll tell you a little bit more about us um, but in particular today, I, I just hope to be a conduit um, and to do that or a catalyst, remind you of things you might have forgotten a little bit about, um, what best practice to bring to your organization that works for you, regardless of our size, there's something we could be doing on it. So that's really my purpose here today, um, is to kind of remind you of the things that you might actually know should be, be happening in your environment to really engage your in employees um, and to really step up that cultural interaction that we know we should be doing. In our time together this morning or today when you're watching this afterwards, um, we're looking at what is a hybrid working environment? What does that look like? Um, what are the trends in Ireland today? What's happening out there? What are other HR practitioners doing in their organizations? I wanted to share some hybrid considerations with you and then pause and look at what culture um, integration elements we should be looking at, what it is, what are the things that we should be looking at, and we'll pause and look at engagement in depth. So what, how can we actually move to an engaging organization? And then maybe three little reminders of what we could do um, more often of. So before we continue, I wanna open up poll number one and I wanna ask you the question, do you currently have a blended or a hybrid working model? So our poll one would be, do you currently have a blended or hybrid working model? Can you see the poll? Poll one, do you currently have a blended or hybrid working model or plan in place? So let's look at that. I'm waiting for you guys to maybe just participate in the poll. I'll give you a countdown. There we go, brilliant. For so many of you, do you actually have a plan in place? So this anything you learn today might be complementary to that. There's one or two of you who don't yet, um, and that's grand. So for those of you who do know, you might actually be really familiar with this, but really a hybrid working model is on a continuum between face-to-face -face and those we're working remote continuously. So some of our employees might be able to only work face-to-face -face or potentially our knowledge workers could work at home mostly, but we're in a hybrid environment now where we have the option to have a certain number of days in the office or in a central place or from home. So that, that is kind of how we've positioned that would work for us as an organization. Another way to look at that is some of my deliverables might be online versus in person. So um, that, that's really what the hybrid working model looks like. 
and these kind of deliverables that you and I as, as employers would need to have in place. Now, in the, in the current working space, what are the trends in Ireland that we see? Now, what was interesting is um, a day human resource management, we used to run a barometer once a year. And then we realized actually things are changing so fast in the business. So we, in the business world, and due to uh, the pandemic, we've actually commenced our, um, running our barometer every year, twice a year now. So in November, when we were um, reaching out to base, you know, Irish, Irish um, HR practitioners, we were saying, what is your priority? And they came back and they said, well, actually recruitment and, and talent acquisition, finding the right resources is our number one priority. And we would find in April this year is that it's actually shifted. That's actually dropped to number five. What really has become important is what you and I are spending time on today is re retention, making sure our, our staff are engaged and staying with us. So retention has become a big focus employee engagement specifically so how do I make sure that individual people are feeling um, appreciated wants to stay with us and what are those things we could be doing but so wellness those, those things what are the things that we could be doing within our reach not for the employees future employees but the ones that are with us um, that's what the main focus is right now um, anticipated in November was that our turnover in, in Irish firms would have been, well, 10%. We're actually seeing that it now is at 18.2%. Um, people are still increasing their headcounts, uh, but with the, the average salary has actually been increased by, it was anticipated by 37 We're seeing now that it's by 5.3% um, increases in, in salaries that we, we're seeing in. Other things that HR practitioners are doing is really focusing on why people are leaving. Um, and that's potentially how you could be looking at retaining yourself. People are thinking about higher salaries. They're looking at career, career progression and development. Work-life balance is a big thing for employees, regardless of their, um, their age category. And we'll look a little bit about that earlier or later on when we look at how do we individualize our approaches? How do we make it relevant for different people? Um, managers are always a big thing as to why people actually stay or leave within an organization. So that hasn't changed. Recognition has definitely um, been called out by people and, and making a contribution, feeling like people are making a contribution is really, really important to staff. Other things that practitioners are focusing on in the organizations to keep them healthy and retaining is um, looking at bringing remote work or hybrid work into a policy. Um, and like 75% of people are actually putting in policies. So if you haven't, that's something most people are doing, increased salaries. Um, a, a big thing that organizations are doing is focusing on learning and development. So how can we make use of that to actually spice up the variety that we offer our, our employees and make it bespoke. So, um, and then the overall package. So some of the things that people are doing is not just looking at salary, but looking at the different benefits that we can apply um, and not uh, giving everybody the same, but because uh, leave might be more important to me than um, pension or pension might be more important to me than um, a, a mobile. So what are the things that we have on offer that we can play with that we can offer our, our team better opportunities to entice them to kind of think that we're, we're doing a different or a better job? And internal promotions are another way that, that um, HR practitioners are bringing forward to retain the staff that they have. Um, so, so those are the things that we're seeing that are happening throughout our country and what's, what's really working um, for others. So when we're looking at a hybrid working um, environment, there are things that we need to, to get, take into consideration. And, and I do know that um, many of you have already looked at a plan or a policy or thinking about it. And there's three tenants to look, going hybrid and doing it successfully. And the first one would be looking strategically at what's important to your organization. Um, looking at your strategic plan, um, typically in the past, we would have said, what's your three or four, five year plan? We're now saying, what is your annum? What are you thinking that you're committing to the year? And the consideration from, from a people perspective is always to say, how does the people agenda support that? What's your purpose? What's important? And how do they step into that realm? From an organizational point of view, 
how healthy is your culture? And we'll go a little bit de into detail with that today. Are you supporting your leaders? So in, in this new way of working, the pressure on our middle managers and leaders have become a lot more increased and, and a lot of focus needs to be given to that um, population within your organization to really make sure that they are well able to lead and guide and that we are supporting them accurately. Um, the nature of work, and I think hybrid has challenged us to kind of think about, does everybody single-handedly always have to be face-to-face? -face, or is there an opportunity for remote work, even if I'm not a knowledge worker? Um, a, lot of, a lot of our focus has gone into um, hyper-autonomy. So um, in the past, we would have said where you work um, is, a, is really the focus of hybrid. But there are when I work, with whom I work, how frequently I work, um, and how I work. Uh, so, so those things are really, that's, that's really the, the five things that you can actually um, dial up or dial down to give somebody an opportunity. So that trialing new things and saying to people, this is a trial, it's not the right way of doing it right. It's not perfect right now, but we're working it out together is really good. Um, flexible working hours looks, looks different. Um, and sufficient IT support. So it doesn't, doesn't mean that we have to duplicate all our things, but it might be cleverer. We might be working a little bit more in the cloud than before, um, but it doesn't always mean duplication. How does our teams work smartly? And looking after progre a career progression while we are still flexing with what hybrid looks like. And the last element is the legal thing. So as we are moving the office away from office being the focus, there are still the legal things that us as employees, employers have to look after. So it's our conditions and internal policies still need to be seen to working time and employer employee rights, health and safety. So if, if we are having more people working from home, we still are liable to make sure that that's a safe environment and that they are are applying health and safety within their own spaces. So how do we make sure that happens? Mental health, looking after it, quality training, data protection, cybersecurity, those are all some of the legal things that we need to be making, taking care of. So I wanted to ask you at this point, our second poll is going to be, if you, if you can look at these considerations, which of these do you think would be a challenge for you right now? If you had to think about these three opportunities or three tenants that you need to pull and consider in the hybrid space, which of these are currently um, a challenge for you? Five, four, three, two, one. If we can close the poll, let's see what is the results. Thank you for your participation. So we're going strategic and organizational, legal kind of, we, we've been looking after it. So that's really interesting. Thank you for your participation. It's good to see. Um, and maybe today's session will help with that. So the changing needs of culture and its integration in our organization. Um, I have to say, personally, culture and in, uh, employee engagement is two of my favorite topics within organizational um, uh, uh, working ways. Um, and it's one of the things that we take for granted the soonest. Um, there is a guy called Peter Drucker. He, he, he was um, prolific in, uh, in America and he was really well known in the business circles. And he had a very favorite saying. He said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. So you and I can strategize and we can have the best marketing plans and we can have a wonderful product, but the way we execute, the way people show up and do business every single day will either enhance it or will delay it. That's what culture does for us. But for us to have a, a shared understanding of what culture is today, I wanted to just um, give us all the same meaning. So when, when I'm saying culture, I'm saying it's the way we do things around here. Every day when we show up and we do things, there's a certain way, there's a, there's a feel about the place. Um, it's people's shared experience around the organization. So when they arrive at our organization, this is what they experience every single day. Now, there are three tenants to it. It's what we explicitly say that who we are. 
our organization is. So we say our values are certain things. Our purpose is. Every time we communicate, um, we, we do things. Messaging that we sent out, um, embedded into our internal training things. So if we were saying um, in Limerick Chamber, this is the way we do things. This is the explicit saying. That's our first part of what people see culture is. Okay, this is the way we do it. Then there is the day-to-day -day experience. So it becomes very clear what's valued when uh, the way I dress, the language we use, symbols we have around the office, is our logo everywhere, the little jokes we tell, and what's acceptable, what's not, the rituals we have. So when do we review performance? Um, when somebody does well, what are the things that we do? Uh, how often do we meet? How often do we talk about successes? And when we are not doing so well, how often do we talk about that? What is our routines? How quickly do our managers check in with our staff? Those are the way our culture gets expressed. It becomes our day to day. And then we have this third thing, the underlining assumptions. So the norms and the values people take for granted. So how frequently do you as a manager reach out to your employees? I take it for granted that I get once a week, I have a touch base with my senior. They might not be with me in the day-to-day -day things that I do, but they check in on me. They take care of me on an emotional level. I'm connected into the business. Um, the established unspoken etiquette, um, what is acceptable and what's not. Now, in a hybrid environment, that changes a little bit, but that's what makes culture. So things we say, the way we show up every day, and that underlying the reality of what people experience. That's what we by culture today when we talk about that. Now, it's made up, cultural elements made up through the purpose of organization. So every day, um, we want to connect people's daily work to the vision of the organization and its calling, its purpose. Um, so when you are showing up every day, do people know, well, my role aligns to the business overall during strategy in this way. Today, when I finish my job, I know I've added value to that. So are we linking daily, um, that daily work connected to that? Um, and I'm adding value to that and I know exactly how I'm contributing to it. What are the things that you and I believe that is true in our organization? What is expected from each of us? What's important? What are the beliefs that are important? That's what our values are. We value this kind of behavior. Now, in the ever-diverse ever environment, um, the world that we live in, values are the one thing that brings us all together. You and I might be very, very different, but we might both really appreciate honesty. It might be a core foundation to our organization. Integrity. You use your values right now and you, you think about that as an organization and you think those are the beliefs that are core to us as a team. That's what brings us together. The next element about culture is our behaviors. And they are granted, um, guided by our values, but what are the things that we do that's acceptable around us? Um, what are the things that we expect people and how we behave? Now, Typically, organizations have, uh, we've got our, what's expected from us in our role, and we have P's and Q's around the office, but these are the valued behaviors in our organizations that we expect and want people to do more of every day. What do we recognize? So when somebody does something really well, how do we recognize it? How do we celebrate those continued behaviors? And do we take time when somebody has actually lived into the values, showed it in their behavior, and they actually, and we celebrate it as a team. It could be a whole team that we celebrated, one individual. I really appreciated the way so and so treated the customer today. They, that customer walked away really feeling valued, but you brought that to life in the way you managed that situation. Um, even when somebody's disrespectful to us, a customer might be disrespectful. How did that person live into our? Um, value of customer service? How did they experience that regardless of how they were being treated? How did they continue to show up in that context? And we want to just value you for it and celebrate you for it. So do we take time for that? Remember, it's the things that we think take, take for granted while well, that's somebody's role. Actually, that's an opportunity for us to embed the culture even a little bit more. Rituals are such an important thing. 
Now, if we had to bring a ritual to life in your mind, um, one of the things that we do in Ireland is on the 17th of March, everybody celebrates St. Patrick's Day. It's a ritual, regardless of if we're there for our fun or for spiritual, whatever the reason people participate, it's something we do. It's a ritual that we support in our, organi in, in our country. We do Christmas. We, there's some of us who celebrate Halloween. Those are rituals in our national context that I can bring up so you understand what I mean by the word ritual. It's those repeated behaviors that becomes that creates community. If you just think for a moment how um, Secret Santa, what, how that impacts your organization, or Jumper Day, um, or when we all kit up in green in March, what are the things that creates community in your business, those rituals? So um, in our organization, we have, a, we have a monthly review of how well we've done. We call that our dashboard. Um, we have a, a little fun ritual on a Friday. We send each other, we say, well, this is our Friday tune. And if we have a communication platform. It goes on there and people listen into that. And it just creates a little bit of fun. It adds to why I get up and go to work every day. That creates, becomes the smell of the place, the experience. It's how I experience it. It's that cultural element. And then there are those cues, those reminders that keep people in touch with our purpose. So when we send out comms, do we think about, we quickly want to link it in celebrating our purpose, insert your purpose here, um, so-and-so did this, or we closed this deal, or we um, supported somebody differently this time around, and it really brought out that one unique value. And you can think about, you can see the sense of um, what we do becomes really important. It, it, it becomes intentional. Um, and, and that's one of the things that we need to do in a hybrid environment. We can't lease these things up to chance. These components of culture become central to keeping our business's culture alive. We need to spend time thinking about how are we keep this alive and well in our organization. So I want to ask you right now, if you, if you had to listen to those introductions and think about those components of culture, where do you think most of your challenges are lying? So what cultural components do you think needs most focus in your organization? If I count us down, five, four, three, two, one. What do you believe you need most focus on? What did you guys say? Okay. So 50% of us saying our behaviors bringing it to life. We might have said it before, we want to bring it to life. The rest of us are thinking it could be in how we recognize it, how we send those cues. That's really wonderful. And recognition is another way. So we split it across the rest of the stuff. Values, no, no, no marks for that one. And I think everybody thinks, well, we've written it down, right? So now we need to bring it to life. I'm, I'm hoping I'm making the right inferences here. But yes, so that's great. Thanks again for your participation. So in a hybrid context, what are the things we need to do? Um, again, leaning in a little bit to uh, Peter Drucker, uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So we need to actually make culture a strategy. So create cultural goals. What are the things we want to keep alive and well in our organization? How are we going to do it? It takes intent. So um, as much as we put a strategy to marketing and we put a strategy to product differentiation or services quality, we need to take time out to think about it as a management team, as a leader, how am I going to create culture in my organization and I need to put goals to it. We have to communicate often. We have to make sure that communications are really supporting our day-to-day, -day, our desired behaviors, even in when, when we recognize how we recognize, we need to make sure people understand what's important, where we're going, um, and just how they're doing. Focusing on the behaviors, so those stated values that translate into our day-to-day -day behaviors, really focus on those elements. So um, when you are bringing those um, values to life that we all say we've got and we're not going to really focus on it. Um, in the past, I think we, we, we were encouraged to kind of make values short, sharp and sweet so that, you know, we all can remember what they were. And yes, there's merit to it. But what we're finding now is employees really want to understand what does that value mean to us? 
how do we articulate how do i live into if we say we're really keen on relationships healthy good relationships with our with our um, customers and with our staff well what does that mean could you spend some time on that so that when i'm in my day today i know what gets valued so really articulating that bringing those values to life and those behaviors aligning those behaviors is storytelling so when you are together and when you are communicating is tell stories where others in the team have lived into it so you give examples to it and bring it to life so that people have a range of experiences to think about what good looks like in your environment so really really tell stories about where it's gone well and potentially if somebody's okay with you sharing lessons learned so typically I would use myself for those moments so that I don't embarrass anybody else but really bring stories bring it to life tell people how day to day what your values look like in those behaviors I was talking about communication but we couldn't underscore amplifying connection more it is so important. So to others, create opportunities where people can connect with each other um, with the purpose of the organization. If, if it is about a delivering a service, how do they deliver it? What is the services that you are doing that makes a difference? Your purpose coming to life. And make sure that people have an amplified connection, a bigger understanding is what I'm trying to say, between what they are doing day to day and where the organization's going, how they contribute to the bigger plan so that their sense of purpose is just so clear you add value through these things that you do so that amplified connection is really really very key um, another thing we could do is really check up in our team how well they are doing how they're getting on um, during those check-ins i would highly encourage you to make sure people aren't overextending themselves um, I know that productivity figures throughout um, the pandemic um, and hybrid work has gone up because people are commuting less, so they spend more time working. Just encourage your team not to overextend their time, that they leave some time to be creative in other areas so that they can contribute in other teams, that there is some time for them to think, that they're not just focusing the whole time on delivery. And I, you would know what, what the right ratio of time would be for that. But you just leave time for them to explore and to express themselves. Encourage people to, um, it, through your checkups, to really create their own networks as well. So we can amplify connection from an organizational or management point of view. We need to coach our, our team to actually make, take accountability for that as well and bring that to life. Um, the next element is to bring transparency to the things that um, get done here or get accepted. And, and, and this is again through those storytelling moments. It's also an opportunity for you to really think about what are the things that you want people to do more of um, and to celebrate it. Now, a way to do, bring transparency to the, the way things get done here is if you and I just assume things the whole time, well, that's the way people perceive it. Um, it will just continue to go in that state. So how do we refresh that? So in a hybrid environment, we might actually take a moment in time where we actually bring people together from different teams in our organization, different age categories. And we might call that cult cultural navigation. So can you help us navigate our culture? What are you experiencing? We, we bring them together and we have conversations like how are things going? How, uh, it's not about a check-in um, individually. It's about how do we on those cultural elements we spoke and how do you perceive our, cult, uh, our purpose? What do you think about that? How are you finding us living into our values? What behaviors are bringing? And you can see if we take those cultural components and we actually turn that into a conversation where we ask the team, how are we doing? And we can become more transparent about not just what we think, but we also how people are experiencing. And then as always, if we're asking people's opinion is really, really change things and start rewarding the things that are important so we can actually move people's um, behavior into the right direction. Um, so it's almost like getting to it before it becomes an issue. So how do we remain healthy is to do those check-ins. And then to tend to people's health and well-being in the cultural context. So we create an environment where people feel that leadership listens but, um, and, and that they are willing to engage them on these things that are important to them. 
it goes a long way to creating a whole healthy environment and culture. So those are the things from a hybrid point of view for culture, which is foundational for us in retaining our employees, where we look at engaging them in the right way. Now, if we're talking about employee engagement, we're saying, well, why do people stay here? Why do people stay here? And people who stay are people who feel that they are recognized, included, they're heard, they're appreciated. Yes, they're paid well and they get promoted, but they're trusted and they're energized. So, so how do we create a place where people feel like they want to stay? How do we organize ourselves to do that? Um, and I want to introduce you to, and perhaps you've seen this before. So remember, just I might remind you of this, is we organize, our, organize us, ourselves through putting out an employee value proposition. So just like in the marketing world where we say our services or our products get put out in a certain way, we, from the people um, perspective, need to put together a value proposition for employees so that they really want to stay, that engagement. And there's tiers to this. So in, in the compensation and benefits environment, we really have an opportunity to be competitive. But those things are contractual. Those are the things we can play with. Um, the next thing that we can play with in our value proposition is careers. So careers don't mean it always has to be um, vertical. I'm moving up. My career development might be, I might be in the same space, but man, I might be learning about new things in my environment, or I might be going in depth. So I might be client facing in a, in a service role. And that is the role where majority of our team are going to be for a long time. You could spice it up by changing up the way that they learn, what they learn the depth of their knowledge in certain areas, the depth of the expertise. So you could be a little bit more creative in your career space. Um, from a well-being, workplace and lifestyle element is how much work do you have to do in the office or, or, or in your remote space? How are we looking after your well-being? Is a well-being important? Are we bringing topics that are internationally or locally important? Do we perhaps have a wellness calendar? Um, Things that we bring up to our team and say, well, look, here are topics that we're going to be talking about. Would you like to vote them in as in order of preference and importance? Let's talk about them. Um, and we'll talk about how cost-effective ways to do that later. Um, so we've got competitive, we've got differentiating strategies we can apply, but your unique selling point, engagement point with your staff is the purpose of your organization the affinity they have with you, the pride they have in working for you. And the things we need to do as, 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 as employers would be to play around those things and really talk about how we make sure that our employees understand what we stand for, what we offer as an employer, and how we meet their requirements. That's what our value proposition does for us. Now, how do we play around with that? What are the things we can do? And I'm going to unpack the pyramid for you from the bottom up. So how do our people experience us is how we respond to those needs, the different needs. So again, culture for me is always foundational, the way we do things here daily. And, and you, you make that clear to your team. But compensation, how do we play with that from an employee engagement point of view? Is we've got general stuff. So our base pay, our overtime, the salaries we pay, spot awards we give, incentive pays for reaching certain goals. And then we have wealth sharing. We can become a lot more, um, uh, you know, invested here where we give team awards or profit sharing or even do equity opportunities. But there are things that you can play with in this realm in your EVP depending to kind of be a little bit more competitive. From a benefits perspective, there's a um, switching on and switching off of different benefits. So if you look at your benefits that you're currently providing, what might be appropriate to that um, more senior matured staff member versus a younger employee would be different. So if you think about switching on and off, those benefits might be really good um, for your unique or bespoke approach for that individual. From a career perspective, maybe to map the careers in your organization, looking at what's, what's next on the run or what's next lateral move, where can they use? 
where can these skills be used in different business units? So if the flatter your organization are, the more creative we need to be to get that career opportunity in our team. Play around with learning, um, making sure that we coach and mentor staff, that we put time aside for that. If you could afford potentially looking at educational assistance, um, a reimbursement, so potentially um, having somebody pay for their courses and you pay a portion of it or when they finish for it, you'll pay for an exam. Just think about creatively how you could meet that. And diverse product and projects where people can actually experience something different from the normal day to day. It doesn't have to change their role, but it could be 20% of their time can go into something different that refreshes them and they never get an opportunity to work on that. So those, those, those elements could be something you could consider. From a well-being perspective, I know a lot of us have employee assistance programs, but maybe consider putting a formal calendar in place that you support through communications and events and engagements where health and well-being really becomes important. State to the team, our health and well-being is about mental wellness, physical wellness, um, emotional wellness, financial. We look at ED and I. Um, and yes, the normal health and safety elements. So be clear about well, what that is. My well-being as an, an employee also is very much about how I feel like I belong. There's a statistic like 65% of us, if we have somebody we believe is a friend at work, that sense of belonging just gets multiplied um, by two. It's like, it's really, really a big thing. Um, psychological safety, I have an opinion and I'm okay. It's okay if I share it. There's no um, recent, you know, back, backlash if I do share it. Um, and individual achievements encouraged. We want people to do well. So what, what are those well-being things in your environment? And then the key thing about purpose, which, which brings us all together, is to make sure your brand as an employer is very clear. What do you get from working with us? Is it about stimulation, intellectual stimulation? Is it making a difference in the community? Is it selling a product that really improves people's lives? What are those things? And to bring that to the forefront so people know the purpose, what, what am I bringing today builds something bigger than me. Engagement and innovation, um, being clear about where we are as an organization and how I can get involved in that, how I love being there and how proud I am. And you can see kind of the links um, for being really human and bringing that to our organization, it really underscores this sense of purpose. So our EVP and the things that we do in the environment. Now, there's a lot of things in there um, that we could be doing. Again, if I'm doing it as, as a manager or owner of a business, I might think I know what's right. But actually, we have a whole group of people working in our organization that might be spread across the generations. And it's really important to know that these generations um, want different things. So um, for Gen Z, and those are our team members between 29 and 24, so, so your young entrances, purpose is a big thing for them. But for my Gen X, those are the, some of us between 42 and 56, if you're thinking about who those people are, their sense of purpose is I want to start leaving a legacy. So what are the things that you can involve them in? that brings that to difference, uh, brings them to life, makes a difference to them. Development across these age categories or, or purposes are really different. So for my matures, they want to leave something behind. They want to build the next team up. Um, for my gen Y, I'm going, I really want to grow to the next space. So who can mentor me? Who's done this before? Who can I learn more from? And it would benefit us if we can look at where, those who want to give and those who need to receive how we can organize that in coaching and mentoring environments. Benefits, as I said earlier, on I might need different things because of the life phase I'm in. I want to be rewarded typically because it's different. What I need is different from somebody else. The hours I want to work, if I am um, a caregiver or a family member needs support from me or I'm a mom or a dad. And then culture, as we've spoken a lot about that. I won't reiterate that, but you can see these different needs. Now, we might know this from a generational perspective, but really, it's really beneficial if we actually pause and ask them. So we spoke earlier on about getting them together and giving us, navigating our culture and giving us feedback. 
Another way to do that would be engagement survey, specifically if we're honing in on the element of engagement, not bigger cultural stuff, but how engaged do you feel? How does your manager reach uh, out to you? How are we doing on learning and development? Those things that we know that are important for engagement. Um, so surveys are a great way to find out where to start. Another way um, is to introduce staying interviews. I know some of us are, are well versed in exiting interviews, but why do we wait for somebody to leave before we ask how things are going? Perhaps we can ask, why are you staying? What do you love about the place? What are things that's scratching a little bit? What, how, do we, how do we change that up? Um, and so to start a stay interview would be to really look at those elements that keep them engaged, that stimulate them, that make a difference in their day. And if, if we can look at those things and we can do more of the good things and learn lessons from the things that are irritating or scratching or not being done, um, there's really good opportunity for them. And to not, not do in excellent interviews. Um, so for instance, to, to learn from them, sometimes people become a little bit more brave because they are exiting the organization. So to pause and ask them what are the things that they find we can learn from um, and, and they become brave so let's learn from those things um, and you'll know whether um, if, if it's a if it's a good exit then you are going to be listening and to that feedback and we can always learn to prioritize our engagement elements through these feedback opportunities now employee experiences are throughout their life cycle and um, the employee life cycle. And if we look at where we can do HR um, practices in particular is looking at onboarding and probation management. So one of the things that we do is we've looked at how we can look at benefits and how we can look at, but in the life cycle, um, we know that if we onboard somebody really, really well um, and treat them exceptionally good in their probation period, as we will continue throughout the employee life cycle, but if we really nurture them in that space, they are, are so much more likely to stay. Um, the statistics escape me now, but it is far more like a, it's like a three time number. People are willing to stay if we actually put some effort into that career development and personal development. We've spoken about really thinking about how can we do things a little bit different in there. Our communications, I said we could, you know, we were saying earlier on communication is so important. Um, but I want to emphasize over here is if we have listened, we really need to action our elements. So the worst thing we could do is ask people their opinion and not follow through. The way we um, do performance reward and recognition is exceptionally important. So performance isn't just about um, how well have you done, but it is about how, how are you progressing? What are things looking like? What are the blockers in your environment? What can I do as a manager to support that? It really is helping employees to take accountability for their own development, for their own performance growth, but it's us coming alongside them and creating an environment where they succeed and we recognize that. And then social engagement couldn't be understated in our hybrid environment. So we really need to be actively looking at team activities that not just get team together and let them have fun, but we need to find ways to drop cultural pools in. So today we're getting together as a team and we're, we're, we're so happy to see each other, um, give ourselves a break from um, all of the day-to-day -day things, but I just want to take a moment to call out and do your storytelling about people living into the behaviors. So just weave together those opportunities to tell stories about your culture and your purpose while you're having fun. Um, and the same things for treats. If you are doing desk drops or you're sending out hampers, take the opportunity and write a cultural um, alignment element. Think about a story about it or think how you can take your, um, your logo or your brand, play with it and put it into the card. Uh, just always make sure that you don't, those small things that we take for granted could be an opportunity to plant cultural seeds. Um, and then there's the things that we need to do really well as well is the employee relations side. Do those it's like any relationship won't always just be positive, but if we do the, the hard stuff well, it actually enhances the relationship. And if, we, if we've if we engaged and enhanced our experiences, these things that people typically want come through, the outputs come through, people have a belief in leadership, they feel appreciated, rewarded, um, and it becomes a reality. So some of the, 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 the businesses out there that are really doing well, 
um, have some suggestions from a low cost kind of point of view, and I've been calling some of those out. Think about how we can do um, stress relievers at work, having fun at them, supporting our employees. Um, those are lot, low cost elements, but showing appreciation. It doesn't take a lot of money to do that. When we're going into our medium cost elements, we're knowing that we're going to look at bonuses and we're going to look at reward. Um, encourage job specific professional development. That does cost money, but those are, are more, a little bit more expensive ways of um, putting retention and engagement elements in place. Um, and then from a long-term strategy point of view, we wanting to create a, a culture and an environment of trust. Trust is pivotal for our hybrid environment. Um, so how are we going to do that? And think about it strategically as I've been encouraging you to do. Um, and then depending on how big we are, we want to most probably organize ourselves a little bit differently. So if we have lots of team members to maybe slide them into one of these areas of priority, making it part of their team, if we don't, then you and I know that um, from a smaller team perspective, I'm going to have to carve out time to think about how I'm going to plan things. How do we do things in advance? We want to create opportunities. We don't want to miss opportunities. So just think about the calendar, the annual business calendar. Think about when you want to get your team together. Call out when you're going to do um, elements around wellness. Plan it in so that it doesn't take for granted or falls off the list. Um, if it gets planned, it will most probably get done. Make sure that it is part of the whole um, management team's um, performance management. That old adage, what gets measured gets done. This is a strategic people initiative and it needs to be part of the calendar. So I, I, I wanted to give us some time to open up for questions. So I'm gonna start wrapping up and I do wanna ask um, the question now. Um, do you feel this is the, the poll I'm heading into now is from, from today's session, do you feel that you at least have one valuable takeaway? Is there one thing I might've reminded you of? One thing that's gotten, gotten your, your thinking differently, you might want to employ? And, and what's our results? What are, we, what are we saying as a team? Is there a takeaway here today? If we can close the poll. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. That's such an encouragement. I'm glad to hear that. Um, what can we do? So from a takeaway perspective, really make sure that there's clarity for your team. Continue with your communication. Connection is so key. And be conscientious. Make sure that you stay on top of the things that you want to employ. Keep your guard up. It, it so easily slips. Um, and I wanted to say, Make sure you get feedback from your team. Don't think that we know. Actually ask them. And then, you know, I've, I've belabored this point about getting a calendar together of activities, but don't, don't um, get stuck in it. Don't just, don't keep it, you know, stale. Let's keep it relevant. So review your practices. If your team's changing, people are coming and going. If there's a shift change, think about how you can review those things. And the last thing is to take action. Make sure that when you've heard from your staff, you're doing something about it. Worst thing again, don't get feedback and not do anything about it. So at this point in time, um, we're going to open, open it up for questions and answers. I don't know if there are any um, questions from, from the panel that you guys want to potentially put forward. Thanks for watching, Amanda. That was amazing. I, I was even writing notes here myself, and it actually oh, fabulous. Was, yeah, it finally goes in line with that. We publish a magazine within our membership, and like that, we were polling our membership and asking them what feedback they were doing themselves, and like that, it really came up about why they would pivot, came to salary and package and overall happiness within the organization. So it goes into key with that cultural aspect. And then obviously as well, it was the, the opportunity to upskill. So like you said, that development, I suppose, that kind of it fits into that massively. Um, yeah. So I see there we have a comment. Uh, Annie, Annie loves your idea of the stay interviews. So it's and Annie nice. does a great job there in action point as well for the cultural aspect as well. And I suppose it's like that the recognition you can include in your social media. I know Annie uses that quite well as well. So any questions anyone has, you can pop them into the chat or the Q and A feature there as well. And we'll pose them to Amanda if you do want any advice or clarity on anything. Uh, in the meantime, Amanda, I think. 
the I liked what you said there, the happy, content staff need to achieve the, stash, the strategy overall. So culture is key. And I suppose it's taken the time to look at it now after COVID. <laughs> you know, we yeah. all had the time to deal with something massive and now we have to readdress it, but see where we can make changes as well. And I do think this hybrid model is here to stay. I think people yeah. have adapted to it. So definitely yeah. that's the consensus within our membership as well so oh, it's really good yeah um and what i what i want to encourage um up, uh, just our participants today is to just um think about culture and engagement as something that has to be seen to every day so your job as a, a organization or as a leader changes slightly it's not something that's left up to a time and space it's a daily activity and if, if that is what we're expecting from our leadership or our management team, just maybe from a, a people perspective to kind of make sure that we are supporting those managers in the right way. So are they supported? Are they equipped? Have they got the right tools to do it? Um, and tools could be an ability thing. So, you know, we might stop with knowledge, but um, have I got the right ability to do that? Have I got the people skills? And, you know, not, not all of us have that, but we certainly can learn some of it. So how do I help that team member in my management team that might need a little bit more support in that area? Am I aware of it? Am I looking at that? So, yeah, I just want to encourage you. I know our middle management team, our management structures are under a lot of stress and, and pressure to get this right. So are we supporting them actively um, is, a, is another call I'd like, like to do. Definitely an action item there. And we have a question in from Stephen Roshitsko. Uh, how do you foster employees to take more autonomy to improve the business more? Yeah, so I think it's a little bit about empowerment. Um, so, so if there's something that I'm expecting of somebody is to, to, to tell them about it. So we'd really love for you guys to step up and, and support the business performance. This is where we go. This is how we believe you can contribute. Is there any other way you think you can be contributing? And we'd like to circle back in a week's time to see any activity on this point. So I, 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 I say what's expected. I express what's, what's required of it. And we are going to come back to it. So, And to maybe test as well, what are any of the boundaries that we, that we are not seeing? So if staff are supposed to contribute in a certain way, we want them to take a bit of accountability. What are keeping you back? You know, what's keeping you back? Is it my style? Um, if it's a personal thing, if it's a business reason, well, I can't, I can't log on from this point on that system, you know, um, but a, a accountability is something that we um, give. Uh, it's almost like freedom with responsibility. Um, and so we want to give that to the team to be able to do and we coach them into the behavior that we want to see more of is, is how I would tackle that. Perfect. I think that answers your question there, Stephen. That seems to be all the questions we have. You, you had Lovely. such a thorough Thanks presentation. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. I will just take this opportunity then to just close out from my side. Um, if any, you know, um, we are we are the Lim Limerick Chambers partner for human resource management. But if you need some support in any of these areas and you're particularly looking for a partner, you're welcome to reach out. We might be able to um, just provide you with a costing and, and see how we could potentially partner with you. I love this support tool. It's uh, it's our linear resource online tool. Sometimes if I forget something, I'm popping onto that. It's got lovely templates. So it's something that you might not need um, all the time. But if you are in, is stuck and you want to quickly get a solution, this tool linear is really beneficial. Um, for that health and safety assessment that you might need to do for ergonomics for your staff away from the office, we do have a service that supports on that. So if that's something you need to think about, but in whole, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your participation today. It so makes a difference. People ask questions and they participate in the poll. So um, thank you for making an enjoyable session for me as well. Thanks so much, Amanda. And just lastly, a quick note to thank so much to Amanda for preparing such a thorough uh, presentation for us today. We all have takeaways from it, but also to Tina and Sarah there as well in uh, their uh, human resource management for all their help and coordination for today's session. Uh, lastly, I will share the details afterwards for Adair HR if anyone does want to reach out. So they'll be in the post event comms. And like that, keep an eye out for the recording, which will hopefully be released next week. I have, hope you all have a lovely weekend and thank you so much for your time today. And thanks again, Amanda. We really appreciate it. Such a pleasure. Have a lovely long weekend, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.